بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته في البداية أرحب بزميلي السيد أنتوني بلينكن وزير خارجية الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية الصديقة في مدينة الدوحة نلتقي اليوم في ظل ظروف حرجة ومؤسفة مع استمرار التصعيد في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة وغزة وإسرائيل ونتابع جميعا هذه التطورات بحزن وقلق بالغين قمت مع زميلي مباحثات صريحة وعميقة في هذا الشأن حيث ناقشنا الأبعاد السياسية والإنسانية لهذه الأزمة وخلال حديثنا أعدت التأكيد على موقف دولة قطر الثابت من إدانة كافة أشكال استهداف المدنيين وهنا أشدد أن قتل المدنيين الأبرياء خاصة الأطفال والنساء وممارسة سياسة العقاب الجماعي أمر غير مقبول تحت أي ذريعة ويجب أن تكون هذه الإدانات موجهة إلى كل طرف يتورط في ذلك وفي هذا الصدد حرصنا منذ اليوم الأول من اندلاع المواجهات إلى السعي لخفض التصعيد والتهدئة وصولا إلى وقف القتال بشكل تام وذلك لحقن الدماء وتجنيب المنطقة خطر الانزلاق في دائرة عنف أوسع تدفع ثمنها شعوبنا التي أنهكتها الحروب والصراعات تتمثل أولويات تحركات دولة قطر الدبلوماسية في السعي في السعي للوقف الفوري لإطلاق النار وحماية المدنيين وإطلاق صراح الأسرة والعمل للحد من اتساع رقعة العنف ودائرة النزاع في المنطقة والتي سيكون لها عواقب وخيمة في حال تمددها كما تبادلنا وجهات النظر حول سبل فتح ممرات إنسانية لضمان وصول الإغاثة والمساعدات لشقاء الفلسطينيين العالقين تحت القصف لا سيما في ظل تدهور الأوضاع بقطاع غزة وفي هذا الصدد ننوه إلى الوضع المأساوي الذي نراه في غزة في ذلك في ذ... بما في ذلك النقص في المواد الأساسية وانقطاع الكهرباء بسبب القصف الذي يشنع القطاع وندرك جميعا أننا أمام واقع صعب ومرحلة تستوجب تضافر الجهود والمساعي لذا نشدد على ضرورة تعزيز جهودنا مع الحلفاء والشركاء وخاصة الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية من أجل تهدئة الأوضاع وتجنيب المدنيين تبعات هذه المواجهات نحن على يقين بأن السبيل الوحيد للتوصل لحل سلمي وفوري لهذه الأزمة هو إبقاء كافة قنوات الاتصال مفتوحة مع جميع الأطراف المعنية وأن حل هذه الأزمة يتطلب تعاونا مستمرا ومكثفا ونثمن الجهود الأقليمية والدولية والأممية التي من شأنها خفض التصعيد تؤمن دولة قطر إيمانا راسخا بأهمية الوساطة والحوار وتعتبر ذلك جزءا لا يتجزأ من سياستنا الخارجية ولطالما سعد دولة قطر إلى إبقاء قنوات التواصل مفتوحة مع مختلف الأطراف في مختلف ساحات الصراع وهو ما ساهم في ترسيخ مكانة قطر الدولية كشريك موثوق في صناعة السلام وينبغي لنا أن نشدد هنا بأن, بأن التزام دولة قطر بدورها كشريك في صناعة السلام ووسيط في فضل النزاعات لا يجب أن يتم استغلاله للإساءة لسمعة بلادي عبر كيل الاتهامات والتي أثبتت التجارب السابقة زيفها وسوء نية المتاجرين بها كما نشدد بأن غياب الحل العادل للقضية الفلسطينية سيكون دائما مرافقا لغياب السلام في هذه المنطقة وعلى المجتمع الدولي أن يضغط اتجاه تحقيق حل عادل وشامل للقضية الفلسطينية في إطار المبادرة العربية والتي تضمن إقامة دولة فلسطينية مستقلة على حدود عام 1967 وعاصمتها القدس الشرقية وأن يحصل الأشقاء الفلسطينيين على حقوقهم بشكل نهائي نتطلع للمواصلة للعمل مع شركائنا في الولايات المتحدة وجهودنا الرامية لخفض التصعيد في الأراضي الفلسطينية المحتلة وإسرائيل وتعزيز أمن واستقرار المنطقة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله Well, good evening. Um, let me start by expressing my gratitude to the Emir and to the Prime Minister, my friend Mohammed, for, uh, as always, very productive discussions. Uh, Qatar has been a very close partner to the United States on a broad range of issues that are crucial to both of our countries uh, and to this region. We've been working together on evacuating Americans, Afghans, and others from Afghanistan, to cooperating very closely in responding to humanitarian emergencies like the devastating earthquakes in Turkey and in Syria. Um, we're meeting today at what is a difficult 
but also consequential time for the region. In the wake of Hamas's appalling attack, it killed more than 1,300 Israelis, at least 27 American citizens, and people from more than 30 countries. The United States and Qatar share the goal of preventing this conflict from spreading. We discussed in detail our efforts to prevent any act, state or non-state, from creating a new front in this conflict. We're also working intensively together to secure the release of hostages, including American citizens being held by Hamas in Gaza. I'm grateful for the urgency that Qatar is bringing to this effort. I had an opportunity to meet yesterday with the families of some of those being held hostage by Hamas. Their anguish is profound. They're desperate to bring their loved ones home. And we are working urgently on that uh, effort. We're doing that with Qatar, and we're doing that with allies and partners across the region. As Israel continues to respond to Hamas's devastating attack, the United States will ensure that it has what it needs to defend its people. Our Secretary of Defense Austin was in Israel today, doing just that working closely with the Israelis to make sure that we're providing them what they need and that we'll be able to do that on an ongoing basis. At the same time, we're in constant communication with Israeli officials and with multilateral international organizations, humanitarian organizations, including the United Nations agencies, including the ICRC, to get aid to civilians in Gaza. As I said yesterday in Tel Aviv, Israel has the right, indeed it has the obligation, to defend its people and try to ensure that Hamas can never repeat what it's done. We continue to discuss with Israel the importance of taking every possible precaution to avoid harming civilians. We recognize that many Palestinian families in Gaza are suffering through no fault of their own, and that Palestinian civilians have lost their lives. We mourn the loss of every innocent life, Israeli, Palestinian, Jew, Christian, Muslim, as well as civilians of every faith and every nationality have been killed. Let's not lose sight of why this is happening. Israel is conducting operations in Gaza because Hamas carried out terrorist attacks that killed, in the most horrific way, 1,300 of its people. Hamas terrorists slaughtered, raped, mutilated, tortured, burned innocent civilians babies to the elderly, men, women, boys and girls. Now, efforts to get humanitarian aid into Gaza are complicated by the fact that Hamas continues to use innocent civilians as human shields and is reportedly blocking roads to prevent Palestinians from moving to southern Gaza out of harm's way. We know the humanitarian situation is urgent. We're actively engaged with partners, including Qatar, to get aid to those who need it. Your Excellency, thank you again for today's very, very good discussions and for all the work that our countries have done together. Thank you. <laughs> رئيس مجلس الوزراء وزير الخارجية القطري تتداول وسائل الإعلام كثيرة في واقع الأمر أنه تم الاتفاق على تجميد الستة مليارات دولار من أصول إيران هنا في قطر ما دقة هذه المعلومات؟ السؤال الثاني موجه لي مع الوزير الخارجي الأمريكي سيد أنتوني بلينكن سيد أنتوني بلينكن هل علمتم أنتم وفي الإدارة الأمريكية بأن عدد الضحايا في غزة يفوق 1500 ضحية ثلث هؤلاء للأسف من الأطفال التقارير من هناك تثبت هذا وأيضا اليونسف أسألك بوضوح وأتمنى منك أيضا أن تجيبني بوضوح ما الذي ستفعله الولايات المتحدة باعتبارها راعية للديمقراطية وحقوق الإنسان في العالم ما الذي ستفعله حتى لا يموت طفل آخر في غزة هذه الليلة شكرا لك بالنسبة للسؤال بخصوص التقارير الصحفية لتثبيت الأموال الحيوانية في قطر 
طبعا هذه اولا دوله قطر تلتزم باي اتفاقيه طرفيه ولا يتم العمل على اي اتفاقيه ولا تشاور مع الاطراف Qatar will not be used unless all the conditions of the agreement are fulfilled and we should focus on our priorities and that is to reduce tension and create a situation of calm and put an end to the current war waged against our brothers in Gaza and reach solutions to avoid any more confrontations and crises. Second question from Al Jazeera. Good evening, Your Excellency. My name is Ahmed Al Jassim from Al Jazeera. My question pertains to the content of communication since the breakout of these hostilities. We know the state of Qatar was keen to make contact with some countries, Iran, the United States, Jordan, France, and other countries. What is the content of these communications and what are you basing them on? In the previous days, since the outbreak of this crisis, His Highness the Emir has initiated contact and I have initiated contact with my counterparts. We have specific aims at this stage. We are trying to reduce the tension and we hope that this war will come to a halt and the humanitarian corridors are secured so that humanitarian aid can reach the Gaza Strip and also the, the civilian prisoners who are being taken from Israel who are working on making sure that they will be released. This, the role of the state of Qatar focuses on finding solutions for this crisis and avoid the crisis spilling over to other fronts and countries. Our priorities focus on, first of all, stopping the war and uh, making sure humanitarian aid is delivered and the prisoners are returned home. Third question from Reuters. from the world on Hamas attack. 
Is Qatar considering shutting down Hamas Bureau? Are you prepared to ask the leadership to leave if your Western allies demand you to do so? And Mr. Secretary, have you asked Qatar to shut down the Hamas office? And if I may, Mr. Secretary, yesterday and just now, you said Israel has a right to defend itself, but you added that how it does that matter. And you talked about a standard that democracies should strive for even when it's difficult to do so. Today, Israel ordered residents of Gaza City to leave and move south, something UN Palestinian envoy just called a crime against humanity. Um, we, the translation wasn't great, so the gentleman before me might have asked something similar, but let me push you a little bit more on this. How does that square, how does that order square with that standard you mentioned and also international law? Does the United States support this relocation? And since we had a conversation with Prime Minister Netanyahu, did you give your blessing for this? Thank you. It's, uh, thank you. Please. Well, uh, regarding your question about uh, Hamas political office uh, in Doha right now, uh, actually, this office, actually, since it's started, it's been used as a way of communicating and communicating and bringing peace and calm to the region, uh, uh, not to instigate uh, uh, any war. And this is the purpose of, of that office, as long as we are keeping the communication open right now and focusing on putting an end for this conflict, and this is useful. That's, that will remain our main focus uh, these days. Uh, uh, actually, uh, now our key, uh, our key focus for us, the state of Qatar, and I believe the United States sharing with us this objective, is how to put an end for this conflict, how to de-escalate, how to create the military corridor, and how uh, to get the hostages back safe. Amara, first, regarding uh, this part of your question, let me start by saying, I mentioned this before, but I want to repeat it. Um, I really thank uh, Qatar for the work that they're doing to try to help secure the release of uh, Asli. Um, this is something that we deeply appreciate. I know that other countries do as well, and it's something that we're actively pursuing. Um, I've also been making it clear in all of my conversations uh, throughout this trip that there can be no more business as usual with Hamas. Murdering babies, burning families to death, taking little children as hostages. These are unconscionable acts of brutality. Every country, in our judgment, needs to condemn these actions, needs to hold them accountable, and we will continue to make that clear. When it comes to providing for civilians in uh, Gaza, both uh, ensuring that they can be out of harm's way, and that they can have access to the uh, support that they need, the humanitarian assistance, the food, the medicine, the water. Our focus now is on helping to create safe zones, and we're doing that with the uh, leading international organizations. We're doing that uh, engaged with Israel, and we're working uh, with other countries to, the, to that end. So that's where our focus is. We think this is the best way to make sure that um, civilians who are caught in a crossfire of Hamas's members and be uh, safe and receive the assistance they need. Thank you. Final question from Bloomberg. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I know the situation in Israel is highly charged and very fluid, but are you worried about the medium and long-term consequences of what's unfolding in Gaza? Are you worried that Israel may be simply retaliating in a fury because of the horrendous nature of these attacks and might not have a medium or long-term plan? And secondly, I'm wondering how worried are you about the second front of this war? Iran and Hezbollah have already made threats of opening this new front if attacks on civilians and the war in an Israeli blockade of Gaza continues. Um, what would the U.S. response be if Hezbollah ramps up its own attacks, for instance, in response to a ground invasion? Uh, and Sheikh Mohammed, the U.S. and Israel are both struggling with this tragic and fluid hostage situation that, that the Secretary was talking about, and have looked for Qatar to help uh, navigate it. Can you tell us about your engagements with Hamas, and are you optimistic about getting these people back alive, given reports that some of them may have already died in Israel?
Israeli strikes on Gaza. And secondly, there have been rising criticism and protests across the Arab world uh, as, Israel, as Israel's retaliation continues. What's your view of how Israel is conducting its military response? And are you worried about the potential? Are you also worried about the potential for medium and long-term consequences of what's happening? Um, Ian, thank you very much. First part of the question. Uh, no country, no country can tolerate having a terrorist group slaughter its people in the most unconscionable way and live like that. What Israel is doing is not retaliation. What Israel is doing is defending the lives of its people and, as I said, trying to make sure that this cannot happen again. And I think any country faced with what Israel has, uh, has suffered uh, would likely do the same thing. Imagine if this had happened in the United States. So that's what is happening. Of course, you're, uh, it's important to think about, uh, as one might put it, uh, the day after and where this goes. And I believe that is part of it. Israel's thinking as well as our own and the thinking of many other countries in the region because one thing is for sure, uh, we can't go back to the status quo that allowed this to happen in the first place. So that has to be part of what we're thinking and, and it is. But the immediate focus again is on making sure that uh, Israelis are protected, defended, and that again this uh, can't be locked. With regard to uh, the second fund, yes, this is something that's, that we're very focused on. We have from day one. We want to make sure that no other country or entity try to take advantage of the situation. The president's been very, very clear about that. Uh, he said very starkly that any state or non-state actor considering that should not. Don't do it. And He's backed that up in a number of ways, including, as I mentioned the other day, and as it's known, deploying our largest aircraft carrier battle group uh, to uh, the Ukrainian. So that's clearly designed to help ensure that uh, anyone contemplating getting engaged uh, doesn't do it. Uh, but beyond that, a big part of my own conversations here throughout this trip, uh, including today, following up the next couple of days, is working with other countries to make sure that they're using their own contacts, their own uh, influence, their own relationship to make that case that uh, no one else should be uh, taking this moment to choose to create uh, in some other place. I should mention as well that, that earlier today, very good conversation with uh, President Abbas and the Palestinian Authority. And among other things, the Palestinian Authority is um, acting effectively to uh, try to ensure that there is a security and stability in this bank, uh, something that is very much appreciated. They are uh, working as they did in the past with Israel to that effect. So in, in each of these areas, yes, this is a, this is a focus and it's very important. Regarding uh, your question about uh, the progress on the present, it's very early to judge the intensity of the, of the war right now, how, how hopeful we are. But we, are, we have to be always hopeful in order to get uh, those hostages back. I think that uh, the progress will be determined in the next few days, hopefully, and we will see if there will be uh, a positive prospect of that. But uh, we are doing our best, our families are doing their best in order to get them released uh, in safety. On our views on uh, the Israeli response uh, uh, in Gaza, we see, we have seen the amount of devastation that's in uh, Gaza, which almost now has been distracted, and the number of people being killed throughout this uh, operation is significant, and we believe that 
human beings are human beings everywhere, whether they are in Israel or Palestinians, uh, they have the same value. And uh, uh, this is deeply painful for all of us. And we would like to see uh, uh, international law applied here and uh, also the same standards that we apply to uh, any war being applied in, in that. We are trying our best in keeping the communication open in order to ensure that and moving ahead uh, with the humanitarian messages uh, for, for the aid to be provided to them. We cannot uh, deprive uh, the people in Gaza from electricity, water, and uh, medicine, and like all the means uh, of life. Uh, we believe that the situation is very dangerous. On the future uh, prospect of this, the entire situation is very worrying for the entire region, and we believe the absence of any political horizon and hope for the Palestinians, this uh, issue will keep uh, on going unfortunately. So that's why we need to focus on how the day after will be dealt with and how we can create a political horizon and hope for the Palestinians. Now we've come to the conclusion of this press conference. Thank you, Your Excellencies, and ladies and gentlemen, thank you.